Hello curious minds, what if simply taking a step forward could change what's happening, right now, in a galaxy two and a half million light years away? Could your motion on Earth shift the present moment on Andromeda? Welcome to one of the strangest ideas in Einstein's universe, the Andromeda Paradox. Okay, let's break this down. What is the Andromeda Paradox? Imagine this, you're walking down the street, nothing out of the ordinary. But according to Einstein's theory of special relativity, something extraordinary is happening millions of light years away. If someone else is walking in the opposite direction, even just at a normal walking speed, the two of you could disagree on what's happening right now, in the Andromeda galaxy. That's not science fiction. That's a strange consequence of how time works in relativity. According to relativity, there's no single universal now. Time isn't a fixed backdrop. It's woven together with space, and how you move through space affects how you slice time. So, while you might say that some alien ambassador in Andromeda is eating lunch right now, someone walking past you could say that same alien is just getting out of bed, or has already launched an intergalactic war. And the weirdest part? You're both right. Each of you has a different definition of now, because of your motion through space-time. In a sense, when you take a step forward, you're shifting your perspective on the timeline of Andromeda. It's like flipping through a photo album of Andromeda's history, and with each step you're turning to a slightly different page, changing your view of what's happening now in that distant galaxy. This fascinating interplay of time and space was first described by the legendary mathematician Roger Penrose, and it completely upends our everyday intuition that time is the same for everyone, everywhere. It's called the Andromeda Paradox, and it shows just how deeply strange our universe can be, once you start moving. To understand the Andromeda Paradox we need to look at one of the strangest but most important ideas in Einstein's theory of special relativity. The relativity of simultaneity. What does that mean? Simply put, it means that what counts as now isn't the same for everyone. Einstein illustrated this with a famous thought experiment. Imagine a train moving quickly along the tracks. A bolt of lightning strikes the front and back of the train at the same time at least according to someone standing on the platform, but for a person inside the moving train, those lightning bolts don't appear to strike simultaneously. Why? Because the train is moving forward, and the light from the front and back of the train reaches them at different times. This isn't an illusion, it's a real difference in how time behaves depending on your motion. Each observer has their own version of what's happening at the same time. And here's the kicker, both are right. There's no universal agreement on simultaneity. In physics terms, this means that different observers moving at different speeds will slice the fabric of space-time differently, each with their own unique present moment. And that's exactly what makes the Andromeda Paradox possible. Because if simultaneity is relative, then your motion here on Earth can change what events count as now, in a galaxy far, far away. It's not about changing the galaxy. It's about changing your slice of time that includes it. So the next time you're walking down the street, remember this. You're not just moving through space. You're changing your relationship, with time itself. So who actually came up with this mind-bending paradox? The Andromeda Paradox was first described by the legendary British physicist and mathematician Roger Penrose in the 1950s. He used it as a way to illustrate just how deeply strange Einstein's relativity of simultaneity really is. Penrose pointed out that even tiny differences in motion, like one person walking north and another walking south, could mean those two people disagree about what's happening at the same moment in a distant galaxy like Andromeda and not just by a few seconds, by days, even years, depending on how far away the event is. Later, physicist Brian Greene helped popularize the idea in his book, The Fabric of the Cosmos. He used the same paradox to show how our everyday sense of now, of a shared, flowing present, starts to break down when you factor in relativity. Greene described time as part of a bigger four-dimensional fabric, not something that flows but something we move through, just like space. In this view, your motion determines your unique slice of the universe, the events that are now for you. So whether it's Penrose's original setup or Green's modern take, they both reveal the same thing. Our present isn't universal, it's personal. And when you're dealing with distances like 2.5 million light years, even a simple walk down the street can create cosmic disagreement about what's happening right now. Okay, so this all sounds pretty wild. Aliens eating lunch, launching wars, and your walking pace somehow affecting what's happening in another galaxy? Is this just a thought experiment? The short answer is, yes and no, no one's saying that your footsteps are causing anything to happen in Andromeda. But here's the key, this isn't about making changes, it's about what counts as now, in your frame of reference. This is a demonstration of how space and time behave in Einstein's theory of special relativity. It's not speculative, it's built into the math, and it's backed up by countless experiments. For example, GPS satellites have to account for these relativistic effects, 
both time dilation and changes in simultaneity, just to give you accurate location data. So, while we can't measure the Andromeda paradox directly, it involves events far beyond our ability to observe in real time, the principles behind it are very real. They're the same ones that make modern technology work, it's a reminder that our everyday sense of time is built for slow speeds and short distances. But the universe plays by deeper rules, and once you stretch things across millions of light years, those rules start to reveal just how strange reality really is. Now let's step back for a moment and think about what this means for our understanding of time, free will, and even determinism. In everyday life we think of time as a river, one that moves forward in a straight line. And along the way, we make choices, free will and action. But what if our choices aren't as free as we think? Could the Andromeda Paradox, with its different versions of now, imply that everything happening in the universe is already set? That time is more like a frozen block than a flowing river? This idea is part of what's called determinism, the notion that the future is already laid out, and our actions might just be part of a bigger unchangeable timeline. If time isn't the same for everyone, does that mean everything is predetermined? Each person living out a unique now, along the same timeline? But here's where it gets really tricky. If the future is already set, do we still have the freedom to choose our path, or is everything just part of a pre-written script? Some scientists and philosophers argue that this block universe view is compatible with free will, in a strange way. Even if time is laid out like a block it doesn't mean we can't still make choices, those choices might just exist in our unique slice of time. After all, just because we perceive time differently, doesn't mean we're locked in place. Our free will might not be about changing what happens in a galaxy light years away but about how we navigate through our own slice of time. Yet others argue that relativity challenges our traditional understanding of free will entirely. If time itself is relative then can we ever truly be in control of our actions, or are we just shifting through moments in a vast predetermined timeline? In the end, the Andromeda Paradox doesn't provide any clear answers to the age-old debate of free will versus determinism, but it does force us to rethink the very nature of time, choice, and the universe itself. Alright we've covered a lot of ground but before we wrap up, let's clear up some common misconceptions about the Andromeda Paradox. Misconception hash 1. The Andromeda Paradox says we can actually affect events in the Andromeda Galaxy. No no no. This is not about you somehow influencing the fate of aliens on Andromeda by taking a step forward or backward on Earth. The Andromeda Paradox simply shows that different observers, depending on their motion, will experience time differently. You can't actually change events in another galaxy, you're only changing your perspective on what now is in your slice of time. Misconception hash 2. The Andromeda Paradox suggests that time is just a fantasy, or an illusion. Time is real but it doesn't behave the way we intuitively expect. Relativity teaches us that time is flexible, it can stretch or contract based on how fast you're moving through space. This doesn't mean time is made up, it's still measurable, it's still flowing. But it's relative to how you're moving. So, even though we perceive time in a linear way, it's actually much more fluid and dynamic than we realize. Misconception hash 3. Relativity means that nothing is ever now. We're always stuck in the past or future. Not exactly. In relativity everyone has their own now, but that doesn't mean time is meaningless. It just means that what's happening in the present can look different depending on where you are and how you're moving. It's a shift in perspective, so yes your now might differ from someone else's in Andromeda, but it doesn't mean you're stuck in time's past or future, you're always moving through your own present. Misconception hash 4. The Andromeda paradox applies only to galaxies or distant objects. It's not something we experience here on Earth. Actually, the same principles apply to everyday life, we just don't notice them because we're moving so slowly compared to the speed of light. Even the speed of an airplane or a car causes tiny differences in time perception, but these are so small that they're unnoticeable in our daily experience. Still, they're there. So after everything we've explored, what does the Andromeda Paradox really tell us about time? Well, first off, time is not as simple as we once thought. For centuries we believed time was this constant, unchanging thing. But Einstein's theory of relativity shattered that idea, showing us that time is far more flexible than we realized. Time doesn't move the same way for everyone. It's relative. Meaning, the faster you move, or the stronger the gravitational field you're in, the more time bends and stretches. This is true on a tiny scale with things like atomic clocks, showing different times for satellites in orbit compared to clocks on Earth. And it's true on a cosmic scale. Relativity tells us that when we look at the universe, we're not seeing a single unified now. We're seeing a series of shifting nows, each depending on where we are and how fast we're moving. The Andromeda Paradox is a perfect example of this. For you on Earth, now, might mean something happening in the distant past or future, for someone in Andromeda, depending on their motion through space-time. So, 
What does this tell us about time? First it tells us that time is more like a fabric, woven together with space and affected by motion and gravity. It's not a simple linear path, time is fluid and dynamic, and second it tells us that we're not separate from time. Time and space are interconnected and our movement through the universe directly shapes our experience of time. In the end, the Andromeda Paradox invites us to think of time not as a ticking clock, but as a flexible, ever-changing dimension. It's not a backdrop to the universe, it's part of the very fabric that makes the universe work. Time is not just something we experience, it's something that we shape as we move through space. So, if your definition of now can stretch across galaxies and shift with a single step, what does that say about time itself? Is the present just an illusion shaped by how we move? Let us know what you think in the comments, and if your brain's still spinning, in a good way, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell as we explore more of the universe's strangest ideas. Thanks for watching. Until next time, keep looking up.